I want a two, three. Rock that promenade, yeah, we're gonna rock that promenade, be the top of that promenade, looking for a star drifter, not a shape shifter, lots to do and more to see, sweet sticks from a dumb to tree, oh, what it is, opportunities, free advice, but not for cheap, oh, gambling wheels, shady deals, lead me back here tomorrow, please. Hello and good evening for this Monday, April 15th, 2024, Star Trek D Space Nine, Season 7, Episode 21. When it rains, it pours, uh, is over. But we're just getting started here on Live Long and Podcast for our review of this episode uh, here 25 years later as we are bringing, breaking it all down. I'm Dave Mater, a live stream here on Facebook, YouTube, and on Twitch. And if you can believe it, we are in our last four or five episodes, I suppose uh and uh yeah this nine part finale continues uh we got a great panel here to break it all down bringing in first straight out of the mean streets of cardinal ontario we got <laughs> the we got the uh we got kevin millard how you doing tonight kevin i'm good i uh i guess you figured out where i was born now yes i went to montreal <laughs> on the weekend and i passed through first i thought you were from belleville and then i thought you were then you told me you were kind of from brockville but then really from cardinal and then I saw the sign for Cardinal, and I was like, that's it. Uh, bringing it next is the ever-wise, the great Adam Woodward. Thank you. Listen, I'm not, I don't feel so wise now, because I know a lot of places on Ontario, but I don't know Cardinal. Now I'm going to have to look it up. They don't it's even only have 16, a... It's only 1,600 people at its peak. So <laughs> its peak. Is that summertime <laughs> or winter? Uh it was many, many years ago. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, Jody Simpson is should be joining us. Um, you know, he's running a bit late, but he'll be coming in to give us uh, his take on this episode. Spoilers if you uh, haven't seen When It Rains uh, or the end of season seven of D Space Nine. Uh, you know, Adam has just watched this episode. Uh, so we won't be talking too much about what comes past this point. But, uh, you know, we're going to go around the group and talk about how this installment worked. Uh, hey, yeah, Dave, question. Yeah. Question for sure. you before we begin here. So we're in the last four episodes. I've only yes. been through season seven. When did you guys start this? What year? 2020. So this is like COVID starting. Holy crap. Yes. Cool. Well, no. And, and like Jeff was like, hey, I want to do a D Space Nine podcast. And I was like, Jeff, that's going to take us like three and a half years. Like, because we, at the time, we, had, I think we had just started the original series with dad and, um, and like I was like, well, that's only seventy nine episodes, and like, and and uh, doing a seven season show like this is like basically double, if not more. Uh, and so it's yeah, it's we're almost there. We are. It, so it ended up being four years because we kind of like took some time off in I'm there, off, yeah, here, yeah. here and there. But yeah, so that's probably what it's going to take us to get to the end of you know Star Trek: The Next Generation. That's come. We're going to do that after this. Uh, mm -hmm. One day, I, I suppose we'll do Voyager, probably. Uh, you know, so but uh, not at the same time. So yeah, uh, so so anyway, this is the 171st episode of Star Trek: Deep Space Nine. Came out May 3rd, 1999. Directed by Michael Dorn and written by Rene Echeverria. Uh, so let's go to uh, you first, Adam. How how did you feel about when it rains? Okay, well, so you know, I felt pretty good last week. I that episode was fantastic. Loved it a lot. Um, and I this one again was like I'm I'm in now. Like I'm I, I wish this was like happening ten before ago, 10 weeks ago but um like this this is really the star trek i love uh awesome really, yeah yeah really, like liking it all went to gilligan's island but we got a lot to get through oh, before God. gilligan's island but uh thanks yeah, for that we were done with that, that. <laughs> <laughs> we did it sam you missed it yeah, yeah. 
it's the same episode every time. We can figure that out. Uh, yeah, but just, but just for, but just for you, uh, Sam, you know. Uh... <laughs> Anyway, we're not, we're not, we're not doing it. Yeah. 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 Uh, and the movie. The movie stars. Anyway. But back to Star Trek, because this has nothing to do with Gilligan's Island. Um, and uh, yeah. So Kevin, uh, how was this one for you on the rewatch? It's good. It's, it's, um, I don't think it's quite as good as last week. A little less, uh, less things happening, but uh, some important setup. Yeah. yeah it's, episode. Right. It is, and I guess yeah. If you don't, if you don't know what's coming, like Adam doesn't know what's coming, this would be a really intriguing episode, (laughs) for sure. Yeah, like, and so I don't know, like this nine-part finale. The more I'm going through it now, it's really almost like a proto, like what we we, what we kind of get now in these sort of ten episode seasons of like Discovery or Picard. Like they're kind of following what this was in some ways, like a one long kind of story. Uh, and breaking it all down. Before we get too deep into it, let's let's bring in our fourth panelist for tonight. We have Jody Simpson coming to us from Riza and Soraya Bay, or uh, Gilligan's Island, or Gilligan's Island. You know, <laughs> well, not on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Jody, it's been it's been a minute since we've seen you. Yes, I was traveling last week, so I couldn't be yes. here. I can't. I but we're we're in the middle of this this uh, nine part finale of D Space Nine. Uh, you know, I guess the second act, if you will. I can't remember the last time we talked about it. Um, I could probably look at the rating sheet. So I think the last time you were here was Till Death Do Us Part, which was like the second part yep. of this. Uh, so now we're into part five. So uh, how, you know, how is up to this point in the story and this episode in particular, how is it for you? I, I remember this being better and I'm not totally sure why I'm not enjoying it as much as I did the last time, but I don't know, maybe it'll... I don't know. I just, it, it just, it lacks something and I don't know what it is. I think you know it lacked for me that I really liked. It lacked a lot of Cisco and Cassie. <laughs> right. You um, know what? I, I can give or take it at this, at this late in the game. Cisco is kind of an extra mute point at this point. Like he, yeah, he's still part of the process, but he, like most of the other characters are getting more screen time than he yeah. is. So, mm-hmm. For sure. Um, yeah, it's a real ensemble group here. And it's you know, there's a whole bunch of different plot lines all kind of floating around. I think what's missing for me a little bit is just the, you know, the space battles action. Because it, a lot of it's just described to us off screen. Like, yeah. this happened, that happened, da, da, da. And I get, like, they're doing that for budgetary reasons. And I think that the acting is really strong and the writing is really strong. So I don't need it all the time. But I guess when we're going week to week, I'm like, when do we get into sort of the... got to have items? some of it. Yeah, like... It, well, that, it, that's what... Oh, sorry, Jody. No, no, go ahead. Uh, that's what was like this. This uh, or last week had a little more of that action, and this week yeah. is a little more subdued. Yeah. And it, it it it's a good story, but it doesn't get you quite as excited. And even last yeah. week's action that lasted like maybe two minutes. Like you know, it was oh yeah, very... it's not a lot. It's the perfect amount for you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Right. I would I could use a little more, but this grand interstellar war that's encompassing millions, if not billions, of people. And I just think that there's way like a lot of it's just like kind of focused about like what's going on with Julian and Esri's love life or this, that, or whatever. And I'm like, uh, you know, I could probably do without that. But that, you know, that I'm nitpicking here. Um, you know, I we were just saying, Jody, too, that this kind of feels like what we kind of like this nine part finale kind of feels like what we now get in these Netflix shows or I guess Paramount Plus or whatever streaming platform. You know, we get like a 10 episode Discovery season or 13 episode Picard. Same thing. Strange New Worlds. Although Strange New Worlds goes more episodic in their model. But yeah, we still, you know, um, yeah, so and, and Adam was just kind of saying, like, I kind of wish we had this when we were dealing with, I don't know, whatever we were dealing like when. I don't know, mirror Esri or, you know, uh, Quark and Rom having to run off to the mirror universe or um, whatever other kind of filler episodes we had before. Esri's family. Like. Esri's family, you know, <laughs> uh, a sequel to the Donnie Brasco episode or whatever. I, I think the main thing with this season, even though I, I do find some of the episodes are really good, um, I it, it's, it's very long in the tooth at this point. Like it, it's, and it's starting to show like it, 
Like if you've if you've sat for all the previous seasons, like it, it's <clears throat> it, it's almost like they've run out of things to do. So now it's like let's just do a big arc and be done with it, kind of thing. But I don't. I still don't. I I don't get it. Like I remember originally watching this arc and thinking, oh, this is this is fun. This is great. But now rewatching it, I'm I'm not as big on it. Like it's not as good to me. Um, I, I don't know. I feel like I wish I was feeling more of this threat. You know, we yeah, hear about yeah. the, the, the Breen. They, they can't fight the Breen. The Breen have this ener energy dissipator weapon and only the Klingons are sort of immune to it at the, at, at this in this episode. And that's explained to us. And we're like, we kind of hear about it. They kind of tell us what's happening, um, but like we don't get to see it. I don't feel like the station's under threat. I don't like. I don't feel like they're really like. Um... Well, and that's the thing. Like, if you're gonna go like a season story, which essentially this is, like, it's literally half the season. Uh, well, not half the season, but it's close. It, uh, close to that. Yeah. It's a chunk, anyway. Um, you know, like it, looking back at like, well, all of us were on the Enterprise podcast. Like, did you feel the same way about the Zindi arc? Because the Zindi arc to me is a whole. Sometimes. Well, yeah, it, it, it had its shit episodes, including the West one. Uh, but it, it's I just found it was more entertaining. Like, it's I, just it's I, like they've stretched the story out so much now that it's like, uh, it's just you know what I don't I don't enjoy is is these drop in regular cast members like Cork comes in for yeah. 30 seconds. O'Brien comes in and makes some cracks about something and, and he's out. You know, it's a very like you know, from what I understood from you guys is that these are major characters that took years and years to develop them. And now they're just sort of, you know, dropped in, pulled out, dropped in, pulled yeah. out. Like yeah. Quark, it, Quark brings a coffee in this episode. Like, yeah, you know, like yeah. It, it's just, it, it, it's almost like they just, they wanted to fill the season and then they just couldn't find Quark anything was they such wanted a, to do. Quark was such a major part of the show. Rom Absolutely. was such a major part of yeah. the show. And like, where are they now, right? Yeah, but yeah. yet I had four episodes of Isri. Like it's and yeah, I get it. She's a new character. I get it, but is she really a new character? <laughs> I feel like I, I like I still feel like a lot of this season seven stuff comes down to budget and contracts and. Well, other I think things. that was part of it yeah. for sure. Yeah, you know, I, th I think um, it was, and I think I think Jedzia being lost in the story is is kind of it. It, it really hurt. Like it really hurt the. It, it still hurts. I don't feel like the show really ever is the same after she's gone oh there's a lot uh, of people that if refuse to acknowledge the last season like they're just like nope no dax no good i don't think i would go that far but and i don't I, think it's that bad but it, it's you yeah. know i think it would have been better if she was there like than not like, oh i that's think not, that's been... not against esri it's just that no, uh, you know i i think i would rather that this crew kind of finish out you know but it is what it is right so i well and this is 20 years ago guys so like you know we can't change this now <laughs> yeah um <laughs> Yeah. But, but you know though like we're reviewing discovery now and picard and strange new worlds and you can just see the intensity of the of that episode though and i keep coming back to that they don't have time for a bad episode right you know? yeah but when there is a bad episode in those 10 episode seasons it really it really does show. yeah but maybe even now dave like like how many we have four left yeah so yeah, like, it's, it's coming down to the end. Like they, they, they got to do a lot in the next four episodes. But you remember, like season four of Discovery, which was thirteen episodes. We kind of felt like, when are they getting to the end of this story? Yeah, you yeah, know, that's there, true. There was a little <laughs> bit of that going too on. And I think the other I thing have felt like that during every season. <laughs> yeah, well, don't tell your wife. I don't know why. Uh, you think, anyway, <laughs> book number two, season two. I thought season two was fantastic. Uh, yeah, I think I, I, like I think for me two. too. Like I think some of the, like the 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 Kai Win and Ducat storyline, even though I do like them together, and I think that it's an interesting uh, team up. I feel like their their story kind of getting spread out a little bit this episode, a little bit next episode is starting to like drive me crazy. Uh, and I just want to see like you know uh, he, he's just like a dummy, a dummy, you know, and uh, it's all the time. Right? I belong in your bed, a dummy. Yeah. yeah, like these two are more on the show than like Jake. Or you know anybody Who? else, right? Who? Yeah, Jake. Who, who's this Jake, Jake character you speak of? Yeah, I know, right? He's off he was, with he, Quark somewhere. He barely showed up for the wedding. Uh, you know, and it was his dad. <laughs> so, um, anyway, let's. Uh, we can get into he the. Was uh, yeah, he was there. He was the best man. Oh yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah. 
Uh, and with all that said, yeah, let's get into when it rains. Uh, of course, it's a live stream. So, you know, throw our comments uh, in the live stream if you have them or questions and we'll try to get to them. Uh, you know, and I got what I did like about this episode, too, is that there was actually a, quite a few sound bites I actually ended up pulling because there was just I think that the writing of this of this episode is pretty good. And some like Gowron's here. And I got, you know, I, like I think I pulled like six Gowron sound bites alone, you know, because he's always just fun. And um, I don't want to spoil what happens next, but anyway, uh, let's let's get into it. Uh, so, uh, Deep Space Nine, we're coming off this Breen attack. The Defiance been destroyed. You know, I'm apparently the only one sad about it. Uh, I'm you know, not. It, yep. uh, it's a ship, Dave. It's a thing. it's a ship, <laughs> but it's more than a ship. You know, um, I well, so we see this map here on uh, space, and I um, on, on on like the D Space Nine wall here i think it's kind of interesting i've never really yeah, looked at cool. this very close but you see ferenginar up here the subspace relay ar5 hey, feet do you, you mean be sharing that with us oh am i not sharing it no, no. uh that's i was hoping you'd share that because i didn't get a good enough look at i it. was enjoying your description though there you go. This now we're back. Now we have the visuals to go. There we with go. What exactly what I had in Almost my mind. Almost like we know how to do this podcast thing. <laughs> you know, I'm feeling a little under the weather. I have to admit. So, uh, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that. <clears throat> uh, I'll be okay, guys. Look how close Bajor and Cardassia are. Well, they would be, right? Yeah. Like the Badlands, Bajor and Cardassia are closer to each other than they are either to them to the Badlands. Yeah. Um, you know, you see it like Ferenginar's like two two or three sectors away. Um but Starbase 375, that's where the party's at. Yeah, like three seven. That's not too far from Bajor. Uh is that where like they were in like uh, back in season six or uh, when they were like sort of off the station and uh they were with Ross out of that Starbase? I think that was three seven five. So um, where's Deep Space Nine? Well, it's at Bajor. Right. So how right. come it's a deep space and Starbase is just a Starbase. Uh, I guess because it's outside of Federation territory. I don't know. that line. Yeah, I guess. I, 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 yeah, it's never really explained. We don't know where D space one through eight are uh, or <laughs> if there's a D space 10, uh, but we know that there's a D space nine. You know, that's about it. So uh, anyway, so this is O'Brien's giving this briefing, kind of explaining to us that the um, all the ships were destroyed at the last battle, the second battle of Chintaka. Um, and only one Klingon ship survived because it kind of changed its its um, engine schematics like weirdly, and somehow that protected it from the Breen weapon. And so not all the Klingon ships have done this. So only the Klingons can fight the Breen, and the Romulans and the Federation have to kind of like keep out of the fight for now, which seems like a problem since the, the, we already were told that the Klingons uh, were kind of you know wearing thin uh as it was uh they had worked a little bit reckless uh maybe according to the romulan commander earlier in the season so you know kind of uh interesting i i, I did like they have, we have this new romulan guy here now i guess that um uh, that senator she didn't get the job back uh she may or may not be dead so this guy is now the new romulan um liaison uh they eventually go and sit down um i don't know this romulan guy kind of gives martok a hard time and he's like we are trying we are trying to get it all uh i, I enjoyed uh yeah. and i'll keep on fighting until the victory is ours that's right martok's gonna go cisco is always like i find like the federation in, in these meetings is always trying to stop the klingons and the, and, the, and the romulans from fighting each other they're always playing like the middleman in this situation um as this war goes on uh, but it's looking kind of dire. Oh, and now we have to help the the Damar the Card the Damar resistance. That's another big part of this briefing. We need to help them, uh, you know, learn terrorist tactics, you know, underground tactics, and um, and so who's going to be who's the right person for that? Well, it's Kira, former uh, resistance fighter, and you know. You want me to go behind enemy lines and teach a bunch of Cardassians how to be resistance fighters? That's right. Exactly what you what he wants you to do. Kira. What else are you gonna do? Stay on the space station and have fun with Odo? Like and drink Ractaginos and have Ractaginos, yeah. Yeah. Come anyway, on. so uh Kira's not too keen on this assignment. She doesn't, you know, Damar killed Zial, which I like that Kira brings this up because you know, I think this is an important part part of uh, the backstory. You know uh, what? I think they could continue the, the strange bedfellows uh title through this episode as well, because yes. You know, you got a couple of things going on here that are uh, right. Very, not, very not what it's expected. 
Yeah. And Cisco's like, well, guess what? This is your job. I'm putting you on this assignment. And it's not really an option. Uh, she's <laughs> like, okay, well, I guess that's that. Yeah. Um, I love he says you're going to have to put your personal issues aside like he ever does. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, remember this? Commander, I said launch torpedoes. I don't think he put his personal feelings aside. Um, anyway, so that's that that's Cisco's setup for the episode, and that's our teaser uh, as we go. So, so Kira's got any help. other feelings other than personal. Uh, <laughs> pretty much not. But I I do like this idea that you know Damar is now fighting from the uh, uh behind the other side, and that and Kira is the logical choice to send on this mission to yeah. do this and help with this so I, I do like this um so the episode title card after the credits when it rains it starts off here with with bashir talking to odo um you know and how could i how could i not pull this you know um i need to borrow a cup of goo wants to borrow a cup of his goo everybody uh even you know, odo's, odo's not too thrilled with this request <laughs> Well, so maybe if you want him to do that, don't call him goo. Like, <laughs> just say I need a sample of your of your body, um, because <clears throat> Bashir was working I on organ. To your body goo. Yeah, your body goo. goo. Yeah. He he was working on organ replacement or something, and he thinks that somehow uh, Odo's physiology will help him do that. So, uh, so he never have livers. Help grow new livers um anyway so yeah so we see odo gives this sample which really sets up uh, you know it's a big point here in the episode and, 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 and um odo gives him a bit and then she like a bit more please you know <laughs> uh to which odo obliges and i was kind of grossed out by this scene and then i thought you know what what's the difference between giving blood in this nothing much well you never ask for your blood back that's true uh and and, and odo wants this piece of him back and so. you you don't sit down when you sit down. They never say, "Give me some of your goo." <laughs> no, no, not the ones. Oh, hold on, that's not normal. <laughs> that's medical speak. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, if you didn't know. So. Yeah, you know, last time I t had blood taken, they said the same thing. Okay, the next scene was in Bajor, uh, daytime Bajor, but we also got to see it at nighttime. We'll get to that. But uh, this is um, Kai Wen giving a report to Bajor in security about, I don't know what happened. What was her vet, her, her um, vedic's name that she murdered last episode? Um, Solbor. So, Solbor, yeah. Remember Solbor? Uh, Solbor oh, I don't know yeah. what happened to Solbor. And very unlike him to run away like this, you know? <laughs> Anyway, um, <laughs> that uh, Odo or not Odo Ducat shows up, of course, still in Bajoran disguise, saying, "I almost believed you. That was so convincing." Reminding us all about this. Um, Worf himself, of course, uh, directed this episode. Anyway, so more of kind of establishing here, but uh, now that Kai Wen knows that this is Ducat and not just some Bajoran guy, uh, she's not so happy and they're kind of having to reconcile this and you know he doesn't want she's not too into the being in the relationship together although they're still fully in together on being pa wraith you know uh whatever's together so that's you know uh, he he wants to help her with the book and she's like for my eyes only i'm not sure why the pa wraiths and we'll get to it but the pa wraiths end up blinding ducat in this episode don't really understand why they only wanted her to read it unless Maybe they're just he's never gonna figure it out because I don't think the pot race would be too selective uh in who's gonna help them get out of their their fire caves. Yeah. Um, but anyway, she, she kind of just like shoes away Ducat. Uh go away, go take your and and whatever. So he 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 goes away. <laughs> She's this look I love too. She gives at the as after he leaves the room. Um, still trying to process all her feelings for that. Cause she's like, I could never be with somebody who's who hurts so many of my people. And he's like, if we release the pa race, it a lot more Bajorans are gonna die too, you know. And she's like, Well, only the unworthy, you know, that's different. You were when you were when it was a Cardassian, uh the, the worthy and the otherworthy, I guess, in her mind alone were uh, were, 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 were struck down. So then uh, after that, we have a scene back on the station between uh, Cisco and Ross talking about how, you know, will this work, I guess. Uh, oh, no, they're also talking about how the fact Galron's coming. That's that's kind of mentioned here in the very top of the scene. Uh, Galron's coming and to give Martok a medal. And uh, even, you know, get, uh, Martok's a little nervous about it. 
Anyway, so then uh, Kira shows up with Garrick. Uh, that was one of the other suggestions that Cisco had made in the opening scene of the episode. Why don't you get Garrick on your team? Uh, which does make sense again. That uh, you know he hasn't been around enough in the season, quite frankly, for my taste. And I wish there there was no. a bit more of him. But uh, you know they, they bring him in here, and I bet I think he's in pretty much every episode uh, till the end here. Uh, yeah, so. but- it was also funny when you know. Well, you better bring Garrick. Well, Garrick and Damar, I have to talk to. Yeah, <laughs> this is <isn't> right. <laughs> exactly. I wasn't but we aware Cardassians she wasn't are a proud people. Right. Hmm? I wasn't aware she wasn't a fan of Garrick. What happened with her and Garrick? Am I forgetting something? No, I like. No. I thought she was kind of like okay with Garrick now, but maybe yeah, like I don't know. Maybe just the fact that it's like double whammy, more Cardassians, yeah, uh, messing around here, you, know, you know, so showing up. And uh, and and Garrick says, well, Damar said he'll take the help, and it's cool that Kira's coming, but her Bajoran uniform is a problem. It's not going to work. So they say, oh well, I guess we're going to have to send somebody else. But Kira, maybe a. I don't know, a Bajoran Starfleet officer. I don't know. Uh, might work better. But then Cisco says, no, I know what we can do. Um, I also like how Garrick disc- said, well, the reason we're not so okay, we're not okay with this is because we were humiliated by a bunch of ragtag uh, terrorists. A ragtag band of terrorists. Uh, no offense. Yes. Uh, so we get our, 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 our the Cisco's idea. And guys, you know I love my uniforms. You know. And what do we get here? Kira in a Starfleet uniform. She looks the good. only way it could be better for you, Dave, if it wasn't the gray top. You know what? I'm willing to look the other way on that. And I, you know, <laughs> I, I, I uh, we just did our, our ranking. Of course, uh, Kevin and I were both in that ranking all the uniforms. And I don't hate the gray top. I think it actually looks pretty um, good here on Kira. Um, yeah. And uh, you know, I, I, uh, you know, I just wanted this to be permanent. I know I'm kind of spoiling the end because at the very end of the show, she's going to go back into that Bajoran uniform. But, uh, you know, I, I really enjoy, uh, you know, her being part of the crew. It feels like she was kind of like inducted. And I feel like they could, they could have even done this at the, at the beginning of the season even or something. You know, I, I would have liked this to keep maybe because I'm not as big of a fan of the Bajoran uniform too um but it just kind of feels like you know we're heading towards bajor joining the federation which was supposed to be like part of this mission which from the beginning right so this feels like a a step towards that um you know and and this is supposed to be the compromise that you know now kira can speak on the behalf of the federation i guess she couldn't before but now she has the starfleet commission she can so uh odo's gonna have to do something about his uniform too guys um and he changes into this not so good outfit i'm with i'm with uh garrick that it's uh it's it's not a it's not a great one uh where is my my, my garrick here oh i added it hold on it's a bit drab it's a bit drab yeah uh you know what i forgot to add to the soundboard but i'm not i'm not leaving that out that's a golden one here guys so we're going back for it 10 seconds <laughs> there, there you go I, it's a little drab. There go. Uh, good line. Anyway, so uh, this is how he he says this is how he appeared to the Car- when he worked for the Cardassians during the occupation. But I don't think that's true. I never saw him wear this lame looking uniform. Uh, he wore like that cool looking thing with a neck, like we saw, you know, in the in the in that flashback episode, right, where they were in his mind and they were like reliving that time he uh, had those three guys executed, right, for. Mm. Um, yeah. He thought they had tried to kill Ducat, right? So this, yeah, but I don't think he, he looked like a, he looks more like a, I don't know, civilian, I guess is what he looks like. Anyway, so they're heading out here. Um, then we get to the planet and we have a scene here between Damar and I think it's Leskett is his like, this guy they've introduced is like his second in command, I guess, of this Cardassian resistance, who is not happy that Kira is coming. He's not happy they're accepting they're accepting help from the Federation. Uh, he's kind of just, you know, not so uh, happy. I guess he comes from the British part of Cardassia because he also has a British accent. Um, <laughs> and uh, the colonies. He's comes. He comes to the colonies. Yeah. <laughs> uh you know but um uh, you know he's not so happy about this but damar damar we can see is a changed man damar is ready to like win back and fight the um you know this dominion thing and and he he's trying to undo i guess the wrongs of his past he's suddenly become a very noble character you know uh 
So how is this working for you, Adam? Like, is your oh, I love this. He, he's all in. He, he's he's a rebel. He's he's he understands what he needs to do, and that's why he's bringing Kira in. Like, he's he's doing everything to win. You know, yeah. he's doing. Now, it, we, he now we got to see whether. He, I mean, for me, we have to see whether he listens to Kira, right? Right. Well, we see here that he ends up, he does end up listening to her in the episode, but we'll get to that scene. Uh, the next scene, uh, we see this bird of prey docking at the station. Uh, we got Cisco and Ross coming down. They meet up here with Martok and Worf, and look who it is. Yes, I know. No, that's not I answer. honor you with my presence. What? Yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, Gowron is back, everybody, and he's here to drink blood wine. And, uh, and it must be drunk. We see here he sees Worf. He hasn't seen Worf in a while, right? Um, and uh, he says, I heard I heard that Martok made you a part of the house. Well, if that's the deal, then I forgive you. It's you, <laughs> my friend. And I'm, it's all it's all water under the bridge, you know. Uh, and, and, and that's it, it, I don't know. Worf seems fine with this. I don't know. Worf maybe could hold more of a grudge, but he chooses not to. Um, I brought a barrel of the finest blood wine. And it must be drunk tonight. <laughs> uh, of course, uh, it seems like Cisco and Ross not invited to the party. I love that when they say that. Where they like, I guess we're not invited. invited. <laughs> yeah, they seem okay with that. Uh, then we get Bashir and O'Brien talking in sick bay or the infirmary rather. Uh, they're doing this analysis. Bashir's doing this analysis on the Odo sample, but he's also talking to O'Brien about his relationship with Esri and that he calls her in. He wants to talk to about, about the relationship or whatever's going on with them. Um, and he told her he wants to talk to her about her medical tests. Which O'Brien says, isn't that a bit unethical? And he says, hmm, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Moral Righteous Guy. You know, he's, he, yeah. he's a little selective sometimes. Um, yeah, here's this is him saying, yeah. Anyway. Uh, he's doing the analysis on the Odo sample, duh, 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 looking at it, and then Ezri shows up. Uh, I don't know, like O'Brien, every like these last two episodes, O'Brien is always overselling it with Ezri. I, you know, he's like, "Hey, Ezri," you know. I guess they're t they're tight now. Uh, Fucking kill me with all this Ezri and Bashir and oh, uh, nice. like we're eight years old and do we <laughs> like each other do we not like fuck <laughs> Check yes or no you know jesus it's... and here uh, i thought that would be the thing you were most interested in kevin no <laughs> like i don't like adam how is this playing for you uh the bashir and esri of it all i, I don't really have too much comment I, it, it's it feels like uh you know a michael uh, sorry john hughes rom-com from the 80s you know do they and i right you know they keep those were teenagers these are like 30 sure seconds. but the same story you know they there's some wacky misunderstanding somebody doesn't you know they're in love but they don't and you know i could just see him somebody's running to an airport soon <laughs> <laughs> and or an airlock yeah yeah someone's holding up a, a ghetto blaster <laughs> right and so as, as he starts telling that you know like well she kind of explains that her and Worf hooked up but you know before she can kind of explain that they eventually decided to be friends and it wasn't going to work so he yeah, so he gets busy and talk, and she's talking and says, "I love you." Yeah, but he doesn't hear it. He doesn't hear it. Uh, he's he's now that just makes it. That's that's the John Hughes connection right there. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's the tragedy. Uh, when he figures out that Odo is infected with this with the same virus that the founders have, and um, so he calls Odo and Kira and Garrick on the runabout to tell him the news. That he's been infected with the disease that they're all affected with. Okay. Well, so this yeah. here. Go ahead. Kevin. Did 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 you guys? Th this is so disconcerting for me. He delivered this news yes. with like pleasure. Yeah. He wasn't like, what the fuck was that performance? Yes. Garrick in the back seat. Garrick, yeah. <laughs> like, what about what about doctor patient confidentiality? Like, yeah. Honest to God. What's man, that? Like, That'd be like, you know, you know, Odo, do you mind going to the back or taking a personal call somewhere in the in the shuttle? But nope. Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk to your supervising officer. So happy. He's so yeah. And then we see Kira's reaction and Odo's reactions, which is kind of, you know, Odo kind of just like 
passes it off. Um, they, you know, Bashir says he's got to work on it, and he kind of you know hangs up. And then um, you know, Oda goes back to piling the runabout, and Kira is obviously disturbed and bothered by the whole thing. And but you know, what's there to do? They have a mission to carry out. So uh, that's the that's kind of the end of that sequence. Um, back to Bajor, but this time at night. And I loved this shot of it at night. It looks so evil and spooky. Uh, uh, we see here Ducat sneaks into Kaiwin's office and gets that the book of the Coast of Mojin. He got the key out of like the desk or out of the you know the, the paper clip holder or whatever. And uh, you know, he goes into it, opens up the book, and then these paw rays hit him with the uh Isn't with the blind the enterprise guys, the little little drawing of the enterprise. It kind of looks like the enterprise, it does actually. Yeah. No, I never noticed that, but no, that you pointed out. Yeah, it looks like the silhouette from above. Um, maybe there's a connection. I don't know. Um, anyway, so Dukat gets hit. He's blinded by the light, uh, if you will, uh, and he can no longer see. Uh, which I, I guess Kai Wynn was just sleeping like <coughs> around the corner, and she's like, "You fool!" No, Dobby, I can't see. Anyway, that was that. Quickly, we see that. We'll come back to them. Uh, back on the station, we get this ceremony where uh, Martok is in, he's like in the order of Kalis. He gets a medal basically from Galron, which of course involves a lot of slicing your hands open and bleeding on things. Always does. Yeah. Uh, you know, this, so he, he's, he's awarding, you know, Martok, who's, who's been like the primary commander of the Klingon forces throughout the, in this, in this Dominion War. Uh, so, you know, he accepts this on behalf and they all they'll go through it. I love here where, uh, you know, Cisco's like, uh, well, we're next because Admiral Ross says it looks painful. You know, just, re just remember, there's a war going on right now. There's a war. Going and they're doing on. all this. It's like, well, you know, they always hand up medals during wars. But, you know, this is kind uh, of uh, not in primary fights. No. <laughs> Anyway, we see here uh, they're all they're all celebrating um, uh, Martok. They're all getting their blood wine on. Uh, we can see here that you know Bill Ross, who has gone through and cut his hand open. I guess he's left-handed because he has it on on his right hand here. Uh, you know, he says, "Oh man, it still it still hurts." That's what the blood wine's for. The blood wine helps kill the pain. Uh, and then Gowron shows up here to say, "Martok, don't worry. You've been doing too much of this general stuff." I'm come here to lead the war. And that Gowron has become threatened by Martok's, I guess, war hero status. Uh, the fact that he's become more popular. Um, and th this is, you know, that uh, Gowron needs to step up here. I'm always kind of confused by how the Klingon political system works. Uh, I, I get it. They are too. <laughs> yeah. Because it seems to be. Based Chancellor on can just leave and become a, a general on the battlefield. As far right. as I can tell, it's pretty close to how Canadian politics work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Except we don't have a military. Yeah, and I bet the Klingons don't have a carbon tax because yeah. any any Klingon can challenge Galron, right? For for the yep. for the the chancellor as chancellor. So at the very least, Galron has to be a capable hand to hand fighter. Right? Yeah, they all do. Yeah, you know, but that is, I, obviously that doesn't make him like a like a military you know strategist or anything like that. Um, but you know, so maybe that's the only thing Galron's good at is just like you know fighting hand to hand. We'll see. Uh, is, is coming out here, but yeah, he's taking over. Martok is sort of being pushed out as like the commander, and Worf is not feeling too good about this. You see here by his the facial expression. Um, well, but this will be followed up more in the next episode, so we'll talk about more about that then. Um, yeah, back, we get a, a, a clip here on uh, to D Space Nine to the infirmary where Bashir is talking to Starfleet Medical because he wants the, the Odo's old medical tests so he can start to try to figure out, you know, how to cure Odo uh, from the time he was on Earth, which had more sophisticated uh, things. And this this may be my favorite episode or part of the episode where Bashir is just like the biggest Karen you've ever met. No, I don't want to talk to Lieutenant Douglas. I've already talked to Lieutenant. Douglas, I need a copy of these test results. My patient's life is at stake. I need to talk to the manager. Yeah, I he literally says, I want to talk to your supervising officer. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you, you want to talk to my manager? Yes, I want to talk to your manager. Uh, he shaves his head up the side. <laughs> <laughs> and hangs his blonde hair over the other side. Right. So we meet commander something or other. 
who is, I guess, the supervisor uh, and uh, at Starfleet Medical. And he says, hey, oh, Commander, I've been dealing with these lower level guys who don't know what they're doing. I just need my me- these medical records so I can try to find a cure for the changeling virus. Uh, you know, and he- so he starts asking him these routine questions. Uh, why do you want the test results? What? How did Odo get this disease and all these kind of things? And- so here's a problem I have with this entire scenario. This guy is the chief medical officer of a space station, a space station that has X amount of people. Why does he need to have clearance to get medical records for anyone on the ship or anyone on the station? Why would he need that? I Well, they're classified. Why? Because they're changelings and they're at war with the changelings. I know, but I, I still but, think it's kind of dumb. And especially uh, this has never come up in the seven, eight years that Bashir, Bashir has uh, been serving on this station. He's never yeah. once had to get into these records. <laughs> he, he's never well. He's never tried to cure a virus be- like this before for the changelings. But but uh, it's still you know, the medical records. <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> doesn't make any uh, sense. He needs Sigma Nine clearance, Jody. Uh, and uh, he's part he, of Section uh, Thirty One. He must have that. Actually, yeah. what, I what don't give a damn. Uh, what doesn't make sense is, and they even say it in the episode. He says, "Don't you have samples of?" Like, don't why, you have scans? Why can't you from use your own seven scans? Seven years. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, well, yeah, but you know, I guess the one. All he says yeah. is, "I need it for comparison." That's all he says. Like, but, but, but I. That doesn't. Yeah. But I have to waste ten minutes of this episode, guys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but my favorite was when he's like, you know, he's talking to a superior officer. And he's like, I don't give a damn about Sigma Nine clearance. <laughs> Sigma Nine clearance. Uh, anyway, they hang up. They say, you're not getting it. And now uh, Bashir goes to talk to O'Brien on the replimat. He's like, he was almost accusing me of being a traitor and trying to help the enemy. You know, because he was also like, Odo, he got, he was dealing with the founders. Yeah, but like a year ago. You know? And, uh, he's like, why is he conspiring with the enemy? You know? Uh, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, also, they sit here and they blame Section 31. And they're setting it up for Section 31. Right. But that's Starfleet Medical he was talking to. They're super cool with genocide, too. Oh, yeah. Like, this yeah, isn't they're, just... They're t- Genocide's their jam. <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> well, b- uh, other than this, um, what do you mean? What are you referring to? The genocide they want to do with the changelings. Oh, okay. It, I thought, like, But I thought there was another genocide. Well, probably. I oh, mean, where there's sure one, there's you usually find yeah. another one. Well, well, well it's we know every time, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. The first, it's like pulling off a band aid, you know, like the, it's fine. Once yeah, you get it we, off, it's fine. We know from Star Trek Picard that the Federation was also, like, I guess Section 31 was doing more like experiments on, like, vet, what was her name? Vatic uh, and all that. And, like, there's a lot more evil stuff happening in the name of the Federation at this time in this war. Yeah. Um, and well, even from now in Star Trek Discovery, uh, you know, spoilers for season five, but you know, that's start the Dominion War is playing into this storyline this season, too. So it's kind of you know, this war had a lot of ramifications, although we didn't see a ton of it in the show. You can't come up with original story, reuse everything. Well, go back, you know, I guess you can it can be a strength or a weakness or both, but uh, so we finally get to this Cardassian resistance base here with Kira and Odo and Garrick. They show up and they meet up with Damar and his his cronies, um, you know, and the, you know, there's 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 some tension amongst the scene. Uh, there's also like Von Armstrong, Admiral Forrest from Enterprise is here, he's one of the other Cardassians. If you, you know, he's the one we'll see later on, he's given a hard time to Odo about his role during the occupation and the security chief. Um, but anyway, like, it seems like, you know, it's an uneasy alliance because, because uh, one of DeMar's guys goes, I don't need a reminder about who my enemies are. You know, it's, you know, not too long ago, they were and kind of still are adversaries. The Corsair's resistance base looks like caves. What is? Yeah, I think. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so it's. I feel it's meant to like feel like an underground facility that they've sort of dug out here and they're hiding from the Dominion. Um, and I don't. Yeah, Garrick. Garrick's good here. He's like, let's just remind ourselves that we're all friends, <laughs> working together. Uh, so they start this briefing and basically Odo and Kira give this thing. We need to attack this base, which we're told is uh, protected by Cardassians and the Car- and Damar and his group, you know, 
uh, are not too keen about the idea of attacking their own people, you know, uh, but Kira says, if you don't, if you don't do this, they're going to put your people everywhere to protect, you know, as, as shields to protect, uh, you know, against the thing. You can't just attack the Breen and the Jemadar because they are in command of the rest of your forces. I, this does make sense, um, you know, and, uh, you know, I, but it's, I think, a, a tough reality of being a resistance fighter, which I guess is what Kira has to sell. Like, I had to fight the Cardassians or the other, I had to kill Bajorans sometimes in, in, uh, to drive you out of Cardassia. Um, it, but, you know, it was kind of, brutal about it was how matter of fact it was like you know like she she's telling them yes this is what you have to do but it wasn't like i was really dis sorry sad to do that right you know but she she must have have some you know um you know you have to get through this this is like you're, you're killing your your own your own people well uh you know kira um I don't know. She, 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 if she can label them as a collaborator, she will, you know? So I think yeah. like the, like her resistance cell tried to be somewhat selective on which, uh, Bajorans were killed in their attacks and things like that. But it's, it's kind of the ugly part of a war and being a freedom fighter and all this thing. It's not, you know, it, it's not without its ugliness and, uh, and, and it's not morally pure. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I mean, she makes a great point. As soon as they find out that they can use human shields, they will. Well, yeah. I, I'm reminded of this speech from season, I think it was season five of, of uh, with Kira. For 50 years, you raped our planet and you killed our people. You lived on our land and you took the food out of our mouths. And I don't care whether you held a phaser in your hand or you ironed shirts for a living. You were all guilty and you were all legitimate targets. And that's talking about the Cardassians more specifically, but. Uh, you know, that's, that's how Kira is. And like, so I think like when I think about that speech, Adam, I, I, well, I don't know how much she's like, I don't think she wrestles with the morality of it. She, maybe she once did. Um, uh, but she's not like a typical Starfleet officer. Like, you know, uh, yeah. kind of, I think, uh, I think she wrestles with it more in the later seasons than she did in the, like the first couple seasons, you kind of get a more jaded version. Yeah. Of her. Like, like the early and it makes sense like the like the season one kira is a different person somewhat yeah know? season one doesn't care at all like season one's just like yeah no problem you know what but, this really ties nicely into though is like is, is ensign row because i think ensign row when mm -hmm. she was introduced into next gen she was very um what's she was word? a bitch yeah, she was but she <laughs> she definitely had a different way of looking things than the enterprise crew well right? yeah and then you know based on her experience with right? her about it yeah yeah, but now you you see this, I guess, carried in with Kira as well. So, anyway. yeah. Uh, so anyway, so they agree that they're going to attack the Cardassian base, which uh, Roussat gets pretty uh, upset about. Um, but he says, "Shut up, Roussat! I've made my decision." And, uh, and there's like, well, "Who's going to help us plan the attack?" And Garrick is just so happy, you know. And we say he's he like, "I like doing that." Yeah, but we know that he had a lot of guilt and trauma with you know helping the Federation oh, yeah. and the Alliance yeah. attack his you know his own people. But he knows that to destroy the Dominion, that this is sort of what the reality of it is, right? It's the whole so, hero greater good thing. Yeah. yeah, versus doing nothing. Um, so back to the station. Uh, more, I guess. Like you know, this is just what O'Brien and Bashir do sometimes while Bashir works. They they just hang out here, and O'Brien hangs out on the bio bed. Uh, was they chat about great if they had the Alamo model behind them. <laughs> and they're working <laughs> on the Alamo model or something. Um, but they're kind of talking about the conversation that you know, um, uh, that Ezri and Bashir had earlier. And O'Brien's like, I just talked to Worf, and he's not like him and Ezri just friends. Like, what are you talking about? Uh, he's like, no, they're, they're hooking up and become a thing. But just then, we also see this thing that they got the um, the test results from Starfleet Medicals that they got Cisco to get it, but the tests are a fake. Please tell me this is F. It's a fake. That's right. Uh, <laughs> it's a fake. Uh, because oh, because Bashir is you know genetically engineered and can has this amazing memory. He's able to tell that the the tests are been doctored. Uh, okay, that, so well he could have just looked at the ones he already had. He's way he he can tell that this is a test <laughs> that he saw seven fucking years ago. <laughs> he can tell that. He can remember that. But he uh, needs Starfleet's records <laughs> for Oda. Like, he's been Odo's doctor for seven years. Yeah. 
I don't know. Uh, he know it, it turns out it's like Dr. Mora's original scan from when Odo was much younger. Yeah. Um, anyway, so they kind of talk it through and they kind of figure out that they send him a fake file. And if we tell Cisco, he'll have to report it. And Section 31's involved and they probably made this virus. And um, it, I don't think this is quite when they realized that Odo was infected like three years ago, but they're getting there at this point in the yeah, episode. Yeah, they're not there yet. Yeah, so Bashir is still trying to unravel this mystery. Then Martok talks. We get to Martok and Worf talking about he gives me a medal and then he takes away my command. Uh, Worf explains here that Gowron is politically threatened by Martok's popularity. That you know Gowron needs to feels like he needs to kind of push Martok out, and that's you know that's kind of the reality here. And Martok kind of gets it, you know, because he's like, well, he doesn't want to be a politician or anything like that. He just wants to be, uh, you know, a fighter. Um, I have no interest in politics. I'm a soldier. Yeah. And uh, he like he's like, we have to honor all the we, well, too many Klingons have died in this war. I can't be worrying about, you know, whether I'm more popular than Gowron. We're just, you know, he does the noble thing. He says, okay, well, if, if this is what it's gonna be, Gowron's the boss, we have to do it. Uh and Worf Worf seems uneasy with this. Uh but we'll catch up in that with that in the next episode. Um Back to the Cardassian base where um, they're all having some food here. The replicated food. That replicated food. You think you'd replicate something nicer if it can replicate things, you know? It looks uh, uh, not, the, not the most fun. It looks like she replicated like tofu or something uh, without anything else. Um, and so they're having like the meal here. Uh, I thought it was interesting that Garrick was over ha here hanging out with the Cardassians. Uh, I guess he's just happy to be around other Cardassians again, even if they're jerks like these guys. <laughs> And he's like, don't be asking that question. Don't be asking that question. And of course, you know, um, Von Armstrong's character comes over here. He says, well, what What did you think, Odo, was going to happen when you were arresting all those Bajorans and giving them to the security? What do you think? And he's like, I thought there'd be justice. But then I found out the Cardassians didn't like justice. Um, uh, Kira well, takes exception. Technically, his race doesn't like justice either. Right. So. Um, but... The tension here is 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 kind of through, and uh, and Kira gets uh, you know all up in the face, which Garrick was kind of warning him about. Um, and maybe if Gar if Kira was still in that Bajoran militia uniform, she would have killed this guy. But maybe she's holding back a little bit because she's in the Starfleet uniform. That's my um, favorite in this when Garrick is like, "You're lucky. She would have killed you." Like Garrick yeah. has no doubt. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. She was going to kill you. Uh, for what you said, like, you can just see Garrick's in the background. He's just smiling and just like enjoy he's enjoying the show. <laughs> yeah, right. I never <laughs> noticed that actually. Yeah, that's good. yeah. And then he then he just confronts him. He's like, "You are a bunch of fools," you know. He shuts. Um, he's such a shit disturber. Yeah. Uh, Kira then starts banging things and throwing it over and knocking things down. Uh, you know, she kind of gets you know mad at Odo for a second here, and then she kind of calms down. But she, you know, um. We, we're also told about how it's like it's really hot here, you know, in this Cardassian base. Cardassians like heat more, so the, the ambient temperatures, the ambient temperatures higher, and um, and we we actually know that the 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 temperature being higher from the 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 the, the founder, she said that the hot you know was kind of accelerating the virus, here, which kind of you know ties into what happens to here Odo's now now that Odo um, has uh, you know. A symptom here show up of the of the disease he's been infected with uh which i guess makes you very flaky uh and it holds it makes it hard to hold the form so odo's having his first symptoms here maybe just being on d space nine is a colder oh, station now i get it they're making them gluten free <laughs> that's what it is that's what it is okay yeah it makes sense now but odo is able to kind of sort of like you know just focus and kind of um, undo it. But, you know, obviously that will not hold as we've seen that the founder has been deteriorating at a faster rate. So, uh, and then Kira comes back, but he kind of hides it. Uh, she finds a cooling unit, which she says Damar already had ready for, kind of anticipating that she'd be too hot. She could have taken off the jacket or whatever and all that. But uh, I guess this is the, this is a Cardassian air conditioner, guys. Just, uh, that's what it looks like. Cool. Um, so back to uh, Bajor at night where uh, we see here Dukat is still blind. And, uh, you know, Kai Wynn comes in and she kind of like is enjoying the fact that Dukat is blind and that she can mess with him a bit here. Uh, you know, and he's going God, to I hate her. <laughs> you know, she is a it, perfect villain. Like, she's <laughs> awful. She's well, so evil. I guess in a way she is. Yeah, but I just hate her character. Well, I think you're supposed to, you know. Well, I guess, yeah, I guess. I, I, I hate it in different ways, though. 
but anyway. like hate hate in a different way you would hate Ducat, you know, or because he's more. Uh, I like Ducat, but he's a bad guy. He is. Uh, you know. Anyway, so so but I'm an uh, S tier villain, Dave. You are. So you maybe he's just competition for you. Yes, I don't like Ducat. exactly. <laughs> That's what anyways. He's... So um, so we get this this deputy guy comes back, you know, the one that they were trying to figure out what happened to Silvor. He he's he's brought here to bring out Ducat, and she basically throws Ducat out on the streets of Bajor to like be, basically be a blind beggar. Uh, which I guess you know there are homeless people on Bajor, like people who who you know if they can't afford uh, shelter, they they're living on the street, and that's kind of what she does here to Ducat well, because yeah, she's embezzling all the money. <laughs> yeah, probably yeah. Um, oh, I love her speech. Oh, you'll find them. You'll find a generous people. Generous people. <laughs> yeah, whatever. You know, I'm sure she yeah, just so you, calmly just puts him out on the street. I fucking love it. She's like, there's yeah. the door. Don't let it hit you. <laughs> this smile she has at the end. Oh, it's so evil. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know what, though? Like, he transformed her. Yeah. You know, this, this yeah. is all him. You know, so it's right. completely yeah. black, backfired on him. Yeah, exactly. There you go. So, it's, uh, Greatest I, of all time. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Don't feed my uh, ego anymore. Yeah. Oh, back to the back to the station where now Gowron has taken over Martok's office and he's I guess leading the uh the thing here. Uh Worf and Martok show up and he's like, I got a great plan. We're gonna go full force at the Dominion. And they're like, uh what? Uh our <laughs> we're barely holding on. We're at number twenty to one. He's like, it will be glorious. Glory awaits us on Cardassia. Uh, That's so what he, I like about him. Uh, he, he always has an enthusiastic way of doing things. Oh, yeah. The glory will be ours. You know, he's, uh, you know, I, I, they don't like him, but he's like, uh, Chancellor, if you want my opinion. He's like, I didn't ask your opinion. Uh, so this is, we see here, Galrind is going to possibly drive the Klingon Empire off a cliff uh, in this war is where we're headed to. Ted is the goat of you. Oh, wow. He's never, he doesn't even know it exists. didn't even like, existed when yeah, he was around you. Yeah. I don't even know he existed. He but he also he says now. that Ted should be interviewed on Locutors of Trek, which that I completely agree. Well, you know, Davin, when that was a different time. It'd be interesting to get dad, <laughs> yeah, dad interviewed by Davin about maybe the original series. And dad, my dad would be like, yeah, kind of weird. Uh, there's a bunch of aliens and they're going Guys, around. It was the 60s. We didn't it was know a yet. Different time. We didn't <laughs> that, know. That would actually be kind of amazing because Davin doesn't like the original series. Yeah, <laughs> Not very much, at least. Yeah, <laughs> he despises so, uh, it more than me. So maybe you know, he could interview him about the, his love for the original series and why. Uh, Davin, <laughs> if you're listening, I would love to hear that. That'd anyway, be great. so uh, so that's so we see here, yeah, like we're there's kind of a cliffhanger here with Worf and Martok as we go away, and then back to uh, Bashir and O'Brien, where uh, Quark brings them coffee. We see here, Quark's this is only seen Quark's in, right? I think, yes, probably, yeah. Um, I think this was at the same time where where Armin Shimmerman was also doing Buffy the Vampire Slayer, he was like uh, the, the principal yeah, on that he show, was a, he was a big character in that a lot of yeah. them were already on their next jobs yeah, yeah. a lot of them I, were yeah and i think that's part of what reason he's not in i bet he he had one day off of that show and he came into this one scene and that's kind of how he, he wrote the whole yeah. season this the whole uh season probably in one day yeah maybe yeah like i wonder how much that did go on especially with this nine part story that clearly would have you know they would have known what they needed to get mostly um uh, but he, but quark's actually worried about odo he knows that odo's sick which apparently is supposed to be a secret but somehow quark knows uh with the ears quark he's got the knows everything you know i like quark brings them coffee they do have a replicator like right there in sick bay, but you know it's you know, they like, don't even just, thank him no no, no but uh, they're happy to drink it um well, anyway, so, Quark's just Quark doesn't care. He's worried. He wants to know what's going on, right? Yeah, he just wants to be in the He's more there for the information. He's not there for yeah. He's not there for the care. But this is the scene where they realize, yeah, that Odo's been infected for over three years, going back to when like the um, who was that Paradise Lost again like, and those episodes back. I think in season four, you yeah. know. So it's been quite some time. Yeah. Uh, and he's been infected for three years, and they figure out that Section Thirty One must be behind it all of it. And they've infected the entire race, and they're going to commit genocide here. And we have to stop Section Thirty One, everybody. What are we going to do? I still that, think I still think Cisco was part of Section Thirty One. <laughs> well, it's interesting that like yeah, like O'Brien is like and and um, Bashir can't go to Cisco, 
And don't even bother going to Admiral Ross because I think that's a dead end. So uh, they're going to have to figure this out on their own somehow. And that is the end of the episode. Uh, how about some fun facts? You know what? Here's some trivia for this. Sure. Fun facts with Adam. There you Thank go. you, Jody. No problem. I missed that in the last couple it's weeks. A, you know okay. what? I got to pre-record it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So both uh, Nana Visitor and Andrew Robinson felt the writers should have included a scene where Garrick and Kira confront Damar about the death of Tora Zeal, whom Absolutely. he murdered last year. Uh, the pr producers disagreed, though, because uh, they, although that Zeal was Kira's friend and Garrick's lover, they felt it didn't serve any purpose <clears throat> because they were trying to redeem Damar at this point. Bringing up conflicts from the past felt like them uh, to them like a step in the wrong direction. But I think they did that anyway. Isn't that yeah. what most of the season is about? Conflict I actually forgot. <laughs> I actually forgot that uh, that that that, that um, like Garrick hadn't really dealt with Demar about any of that, and no. uh, you know you would think that yeah, Garrick would want to do. Something. But I think between uh, Garrick and and um, and Kira, I think Kira would have the harder time. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, this is the last episode directed by Michael Dorn. Um. Okay. okay, he's a decent he director. Did. He's in it a fair bit for somebody who directed it, so kudos. Yeah. Uh, this episode, he's in a lot of lines, though, Dave. He didn't have a lot of lines. He's just standing no, around. it's a lot of looks. He's like, just fo he just told the DP, he's like, just focus yeah. in on my face. So I'll make it, I'll just do all the acting with my, I'll just, my I'll just expression. grunt. Yeah. <laughs> just give me all those close ups I always want. I can, I get to decide now. Yeah. Uh, this is the episode. This episode is Robert Riley's, uh, for Robert O'Reilly's first appearance as Gowron in more than two years. He last played the character in the, the fifth season's By Inferno's Light, though he did play a count man in Bada Bing Bada Bang. Bang, uh, yeah, he yeah he had been around here, yeah, but we haven't seen him in a good while. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. Dominion will rule the day. They have my name. <laughs> uh, Sub Commander Villar of the Robin Hood Empire appears for the first time in this episode. Uh, he's been mentioned by Senator Kretak in the um, Inter Arma. Uh, whatever the latin one yeah yeah the latin one okay uh ducat and kai win are effectively oh this is new for me uh effectively written out of the story and won't return until the final uh this has become be, uh, done because uh, Re uh renee archivaria puts it they ran out of story for those characters dave you called that earlier tonight actually i i didn't i didn't even remember that they're not in the next episode at all like yep. i did yeah. just like you know i feel like this storyline is good and i guess so that there's actual uh, a significant amount of time that ducat's gonna spend on the streets yeah uh, um yeah. and they wouldn't be needed until the final installment the producers later related that when planning out the nine part serialized final story something that was rare on tv at that time um and never been done on star trek they introduced Ducat and Win too early in the serial. They felt. I agree. I feel like that they, they, they could have you know done this a little like because it's you know it's it's like one episode with them or two episodes with them all spread over like five episodes. Yeah. Um, the name of this episode is drawn from the English phrase "When it rains, it pours," and said usually when a series of bad things happen in tandem. Uh, Kira is given the commission of a rank of commander, the naval equivalent to lieutenant colonel. Mm -hmm. uh, Von Armstrong makes his Armstrong makes his second appearance in the series on his way to be playing the unequaled thirteen roles in various Star Trek series, mostly Admiral Forrest on on Enterprise. Uh, thirteen roles, though, in various Star Trek series. Yeah, because he's like a, he's in a he's couple. Been, he's been in a couple different ones. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But his major character aliens. was a lot of aliens he's Admiral. played and Borgs and whatever. So he's been around. Uh, when Odo asks Kira how her food is, she diversely says, or sorry, diversely says, replicated. This continues a long-standing discrepancy in the 24th century that start in Star Trek regarding the quality of replicated food. Oftentimes it is said to be delicious and perfectly prepared. Other times it is made out to be noticeably inferior to food made by hand. Yeah. Well, I guess it's, it I depends will. what you tell the replicator to do. If you tell it just to make little white bland cubes, then yeah, it's not going to taste you, good. Yeah. Dave, well, do you have, I will try your burned replicated bird meat. Bird meat. Oh, you know, I have it somewhere. <laughs> uh, or, gonna... you know, we know that Cisco can cook and Cassidy can't. Last week. Yeah, I... I shall try some of your burned, replicated bird meat. Oh, good old Kern. <laughs> I know that voice. Yeah, it's Tony Todd. Um, where's, 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 Tony Todd's that? awesome. 
Hold on. I got a great Tony Todd um, clip right here when I need it. T-O. Jeez, I have so many clips now, guys. It's off the charts. Here. Oh, yeah. I want my fucking money. It's true. He does. Uh, so I like uh, um, who we got here. Ducat and uh, Kai. Kira Odo Garrick will also disp- uh, are not coming back to the series finale. Who? Kira Odo and Garrick. Oh yeah, that's right. So there's gonna be two episodes where we're not gonna see any Kai Win or Ducat or any of them. That's right. Yep. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And then um, we didn't really mention too much. I guess we, we touched on it, but this is the first episode where Odo exhibits symptoms of the uh, morphogenic virus in this. Well, in this episode. So there you go. Yeah. Well, hey, there you go. Okay. Well, thank you for the fun facts, Adam. Let's get into our ratings and bring this up. Um, so I don't know who wants to start us up. I like this a little bit better than the last couple of episodes, just because I thought the, the script was really good and uh, some fun moments here. I love Kira in that uniform. I think it's, it's, it's so I'm going like 8.2. Uh, Jody. Uh, I'm not going to go that high. Um, seven and a half. All right. Uh, Adam. Uh, first time seeing this, I, I give this an eight and a half. Okay. And Kevin? I would also give this an eight and a half. Okay. I'm not sure if Davin's rated this or not. Would have gave it a 10. He would give it a 10, <laughs> probably. Uh, Nor- Norman's with it. So he's also saying eight and a half. So just the four of us tonight, uh, we're averaging an 8.2. And uh, IMDb gives this an episode an 8.1. Uh, so, you know, we're, it's pretty good. Uh, Sam wants okay. us to know that yeah. he's getting his wisdom teeth out. That was awful. I, and he luck. wants to know if we have any wisdom for you. Uh, well, I still have my wisdom teeth, so no. I, I got mine out like a long time ago. It was awful. Awful. I have three out of the four. And I will say that Tylenol is your best friend. <laughs> yeah. I remember my brother Rich had it done. Line. It was not good. Like they explain it, they slice open, and it's a whole. Yeah, thing. you should watch it on YouTube before and see what they do, Sam, because it's really fun to see. Oh, oh, good oh luck. my God, Adam! Don't Why you're gonna you kill him. So mean. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> you're gonna All make right. the kid fucking <laughs> kill himself here. I'm like, come on, yeah, it's not that bad. Well, and most I, of it, most of the bad stuff is done when you know you're either knocked out or you're uh, you know under local oh like, man I, so sam like are you saying you won't be here on may 6th because wait a minute yeah may 6th is is that a tuesday or monday it's a, yeah it's a monday yeah well i guess that's the last that's second to last episode or maybe he'll be done his surgery by then and he'll be all drugged up and he'll be oh that'll be fantastic that'd be Comics amazing be great. <laughs> are you getting the laughing gas or are you going just like under there sam i wonder is that still a thing laughing gas oh yeah, yeah. i'm I've never had it. Uh, I have. It's fun. It's, it's fun. Well, it's called laughing gas. So <laughs> he's doing all four of them. Is oh, you might as well do them all at once. Why not? Amy just got his out, and I was like, "How was it?" He's like, "Eh, whatever." Like, he didn't see it. It's one. you know what? It isn't nearly as bad as people make it out to be. But Maybe it's not as bad it, as it used to be. Used it's, to be. Yeah. It's inconvenient <laughs> for yeah. sure. Um, but you know, with modern technology. technology and stuff, they uh, they're pretty good at it now. Well, guys, looking at the next episode, it's called Tacking into the Wind, uh, written by Ronald D. Moore, directed by Mike Behar. Oh, so uh, things are shifting. Things are shifting. We're going a different direction. We're going a different direction. Um, well, it's got three plot lines. I, we are going to see some Kira Odo and Garrick in the, in the next one. I don't know what this is talking about then. Um, the second plot line is more about Gowron and Martok and Worf. The third plot line is more about, you know, O'Brien and Bashir trying to find a cure for the changeling disease. So that's what we can expect in this next episode. Uh, hey, I just realized this episode, I mean, as much as we find Ezri a little annoying sometimes, it didn't have much of her in it. No. no. But the parts that were, she was in it, and not her fault. It's just like, I, it's just, it's, I don't care for this storyline with them. That's all. Yeah, me it's, neither. You know, it just seems not important, but. They and I really, really hate, I really hate the, like, like you said, the John Hughes, like, ah, uh, that I like you, but I don't want to say it. I don't like, I hate that. I just, like the will they, won't they? Like, like, 
Not they, only that, I, but why did we need to do this in the last season of this show? You know what? Like, I can't no. figure that out, Jody. We didn't really need that storyline at all. No. Like the war no. thing, and they could have just killed that relationship, and that would have been done. I'm not even sure why we have Ezri, quite honestly. But and nothing against the actress, but I just think she's poorly written. And well, she's supposed to be the counselor, but she does very little counseling. Uh, you know, so well, Troy's the same way though. <laughs> comes out of writing like they just she knows how to crash ships and shit but the, the, she's she's overused but sort of used in the wrong ways in my opinion yeah so anyway yeah. that's that's all you can she's mostly just a, there to be a girl like to, so a girl because to be i missed pursued. last week i didn't get to get your guys opinions on the unfortunate passing of lower decks we well, yeah, we're, 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 uh, we're getting a fifth season, and apparently that will be the end of the show. So, yeah, we can, I guess, wrap up for tonight on D Space Nine. Talk about the state of the nation in Star Trek, of course. Uh, yeah, Lower Decks, uh, only getting one more season. Now, Jody, you said it wouldn't. I remember there was earlier predictions. We were like, hey, we'll get two seasons, and that will be. No, I, I think I said four. four. I think I remember. Either way, I'm wrong. You're talking about the actors and saying how big they become and how, demand they, how in demand they become. And I think Dave. I think you said it, or somebody said it anyway, that it would be one more. Uh, well, I, I was always like, like because the, how many seasons of The Simpsons have we had? Like in, a, in a, an insane oh, amount. Oh, they're right? like 36 or something. And, look, and Family Guy. Like, it doesn't feel like these animated shows really should have like an expiration for a cast because you just have to get people down to record some lines, you know, uh, in, a, in a booth. Well, not only that, but you can also get people that can impersonate those lines as well. Like, you know, worst case scenario, like if they if they're done, you know, you can still have the character. I suspect it, it has to do with how much the show costs to make and how much it's getting in terms of viewers. You know, it's probably. Yeah, not. I think the viewership is probably the biggest complaint because I think a lot of diehard Star Trek people aren't interested in watching it. And I think that's like if you look at the forums for a lot of the Star Trek forums, a lot of people shit on it. And it's mostly because of the fact that they're like, oh, it's not serious. Blah, blah. It's like, it's not supposed to be serious. Like it's, but, and also with the, the format of lower decks, you could easily have new characters without an issue. Like it's, you could, yeah. you could bring on a whole new, yeah, you know, four it, doesn't or five have to be it doesn't have to be these guys. It could be another ship. It could be, you know, another crew. Like, it, so I, I think, I think this was going to, this one's going to bite them in the ass, I think, but Paramount is notorious for biting themselves in the ass. So. Well, at least we get 50 hopefully 50 pretty solid episodes yeah i would say most of them are pretty solid um but uh, this this petition thing no that's not going to work i can tell I you right now <laughs> it's not 1968 you know it's not 1968 yeah. Yeah. but we're it's all not, sending you know, letters like you know all the power to you guys if you want to sign this petition thing but you know i just it's not gonna work. can't hurt what they should have did was they should have axed Discovery two, three seasons ago and put that money towards Lower Decks. Well, we're getting we're in our speaking of which, we're on our final season of Discovery as well. Another another, another another one that got five seasons. Uh we're covering that on Thursdays right now. Uh check that out with me and Adam and Ashley and Michael Chan and uh, Chris Worldwide Murphy. Uh, you know, in some combination of us each Thursday. We're going into episode four, this one uh coming up. So if you're into that show, let us, you know. Make sure to check out the podcast. Uh, we'll cover Lower Decks whenever that new season comes out. Strange New Worlds as well just got renewed for, um, I guess it will be the third season or fourth season. I can't even remember, but um, still one. Fourth, so, I think. Fourth season, yeah. Uh, fourth season coming up. So, you know, and I like straight, I like all these shows. I just, I don't know. I, I'm guessing this is coming down to how much viewership and whatever the business, I don't even know how their business model works, quite frankly, but I get the sense that, you know, a show needs to be pretty popular maybe to keep it going. Well, especially in a streaming age, right? Because like you're right. losing a lot of commercial revenue, stuff like that. So it's like literally you're getting money from subscribers. Like that's like a, a percentage of your Netflix goes to that and a percentage yeah. of your Paramount Plus goes to that and you know, people sign like up that. just for paramount plus just to watch lower decks i doubt it no no in canada no. definitely not because you can see it on ctv sci-fi and whatever and like uh so i don't know um anyway so without so i'm sad about that news of course uh but you know star trek is still going strong we're gonna get more shows in the future they seem uh, to have a lot of hate on for the animated shows uh like prodigy same thing well, I think they're just expensive. I, I I think they're actually more expensive than than you think to make, and I think they take a long time to make. Uh, and if they're I not, don't know, it, South South Park seems to be doing pretty good for that. Pretty South Park animation, yeah. <coughs> cheaper animation. Yeah. Well, it's <clears throat> yes, but you can't tell me you can't CG this stuff. Like you, they could easily CG it. 
Ugh. I don't know. It, like, it's I, still okay, 2D I, plane. I, like, I filmed yeah. my background work for the boys. Like, what was that? Like a year and a half ago. This yeah. season's still not out. Like, you know, like some of the like, yeah, I, but that's that's a lot. There's a lot of with that type of show. There's a lot of VFX that they have to put in after. They like also the you are you forgetting? We also had a strike. Yeah, there was a writing strike. As we well. already yeah. shot it. Okay, this episode, I don't know how it. Th this episode we just watched. All right. Like, how many weeks before do you think that, that was it made and then put on TV? Back then? Yeah. Probably I, five weeks, six weeks. Yeah, probably, probably. like a month yeah. before it, we would see it on TV. Now it's like two, three, four years later, it finally comes to screen. I'm like, if this is the cost of special effects, just give me more people talking in rooms. I'd rather just keep the stories going, <laughs> you know? So, Dave is the finally, star. you're coming around. Dave is the star of that. I don't show. know about that, Kevin. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's my little rant, I guess. I suppose. Um, all right. Well, make sure to check out all Dave, of our man. podcasts. I think there's a debate nine coming up. Uh, is that later this week? I think no, it's the ninth. Oh, it's the nineteenth. Yeah, this is week Friday. Yeah. It, Friday. What? Well, check that out. Friday. Uh, it's you and uh, Mark and uh, Davin, right? Are yeah. going to be debating. It's the. It's the. It's the return, right? Well, the it's revenge. a completely different show than that other no. crazy one where you had to. Anyway, <laughs> I, I I know what your grievances are. The Darmok trivia, yes, and I oh, and man. I share them. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't have done well in that either. I was I was watching from home, and I was like, I don't know what she's onto here. But uh, <laughs> if so... you recall, though, Adam, I was Team Adam. Yeah, I appreciate that. I suck though. I cannot remember things from yesterday. Never mind. Like I, I know what's going on. Yeah, it was like cheering for the Leafs a bit, you know. Like thanks, but, Dave. But, but you know, I was my heart was with you. So <laughs> wow. Okay, listen for all the viewers out there. Don't go back and watch it. It's embarrassing. It's oh, I, I absolutely <laughs> should watch it. I'm gonna spit off for my my character are the boys guys. I I, I do play a cameraman. <laughs> At, at, at I, the, I can't uh, wait for the cameraman. I'm a Vought News cameraman. Watch it. That's, uh, that's what's taking so long. They're looking. They have saw you, and they're like, and they're like, we got to get a that guy. guy. We're gonna have to find him. <laughs> we gotta write a you ten should, episode uh, arc for this guy. You should have seen my acting, guys. I was like going in with the camera like, every time. I was committed. I was, uh, you know. You'll see. You'll I, see when it comes out. Whenever I, I the hell that is, I can't wait yeah. to see it. Yeah, in it's next be year, epic. I guess it will be like four years after we shot it. it no, will I think it's this happen. year they're releasing it. Uh, I saw a trailer, so I know it's season four. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, so uh, check out the United Federation of Podcasts as well. Uh, all of our affiliate podcasts. You can ufpodcast.com. Shows like Trivial Debates and Aiming on Track, uh, Hold Up, and Hey, Did You See This One? Of course, the X-rated podcast, Dev and Andre on Tuesdays right now covering X-Men 97. Uh, are you been are you guys watching that X-Men cartoon at all? I have been. Yeah. I just I had to tell them today. I'm like, this is this this last episode. They all loved it. It's, like, it's 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 going back to my 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 woke thing. And you know uh, how I feel about this. I was just like, is this still a Saturday morning cartoon? They're like, no, this is yeah. now for adults. I was like, okay. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> somebody said it was the best show ever made. Like, like, like probably Davin. Like, like the United Federation people, uh, like whether it be Jamil Murphy, uh, you know, Jason Phillips, they all loved this episode. And I was like, I was like, yeah, guys. I couldn't, like, I couldn't get too far into it, but it, it's, it's, you know what? The show isn't bad. Uh, no, no. But, but this episode was definitely not. Good. Anyway, so anyway, check out their podcast. They'll be on tomorrow talking about that. That the, the newest episode, maybe the greatest ever. Super Mater Brothers podcast, still covering Survivor forty six every Wednesday. We got a few episodes left. Oh, back. I got a pitch for a new show. Oh, what's that? It's going to be called It's a Ten, and it's just Davin <laughs> telling us what he likes. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Everything. Just on today's episode, it's a ten. Yeah. <laughs> I'd watch well, it. I would watch it too. I'd watch the hell out of that. Yeah. I want too. Davin to do a show like that. All right. Well, guys, I think we'll sign off for tonight. Thanks for being with us. Make sure to like, subscribe. It really helps the channel out. Check out our Patreon. Uh, you know, we we, we love the support. Uh, we just keep doing what things. we doing. Get yourself a Horgon and, uh, and and enjoy life. It's a good purchase. You know? You know, just just let loose, guys out there, and don't talk to Lieutenant Douglas because we've already talked to Lieutenant Douglas. Uh, we'll see you next time. No, I don't want to talk to Lieutenant Douglas. I've already talked to Lieutenant Douglas. I need a copy of these test results. My patient's life is at stake. We'll see you next time, everybody. Now let's get out of here.